Believe it or not, some used car models are now selling for higher prices than if you bought the same car brand new. Today, we're taking a deep dive into what's going on with car prices now and why new and used cars are selling at abnormal prices. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. So I'll share tips on what you can do if you absolutely must buy a car right now. Normally, buying a used car is more cost effective for your wallet. But up until recently, some used car models are selling for thousands of dollars more than their brand new counterparts, especially since last year, and so it's been the worst time to buy a car in American history. Just look at seven out of the 10 most popular cars in the US. It sounds strange and counterintuitive, but according to a recent study, the following used models cost more than a new one. Let's start with the Toyota RAV4. Here in the US, it's one of the best selling crossovers, but up until recently, it cost almost $6,000 more to buy a used 2021 RAV4 than if you were to buy a new 2022 model at MSRP. If you're one wondering what the other used cars have been. Here's a short list of the craziness going around. So the ever popular Honda Civic has set some consumers back a whopping 5,300 bucks more than if they bought a brand new one. Next, just shift your eyes to a used Honda CRV. On average, it set consumers back $3,800 more than a new model. Then we have the Toyota Camry, Nissan Rogue, and Toyota Highlander. A used Camry, Rogue, and Highlander, on average, cost many consumers $3,200, $3,100, and $2,100 more respectively than new models did. If you're a truck lover, a used F-150 costs $100 more than if bought new. But the used car market has seemed to reach its peak. But let me clarify one thing. Just because some new cars have been cheaper than their used car counterparts doesn't mean that new cars are cheap. It's actually the opposite. New car prices continue to reach all new record highs. Just a couple months ago, one report found that the estimated average retail price of a new car sold that month was almost $46,300. That was an 11.5% increase from exactly one year before. And that was the highest increase on record. Now, if you think Think that's bad that's not the worst part other estimates that looked at different data found that the average new car purchased on july 2022 sold for almost 48,200, and that's another record high so why are new car prices continuing at such a rapid rate well, at the heart of it all are the global supply and demand issues. Dealerships just don't have enough inventory of new cars to sell. That means that buyers have less choices and car dealerships are able to charge top dollar for the cars that they have available for sale right now. Because of this, dealerships are on target to profit more than five grand for every new car they sell. That's on average 126% more profit on each car compared to the normal market conditions. And of course, there's the ongoing global semiconductor chip shortage. Because of that, car manufacturers are prioritizing their most expensive vehicles to make higher profit. If car makers don't have enough semiconductors, they have to pick and choose which vehicles will get them and which ones won't. That makes business sense because if you're a car maker, why would you use up your semiconductor chip inventory on a $25,000 car when you can put it in a $60,000 car instead? But that's not all. Monthly loan payments are also at all-time record highs. This past July, the average monthly payment for a new car exceeds $716. Compare that to August of last year, 2021, that's a 12.2% increase. Now, if you've been putting off buying a used car because of abnormally high prices, as I mentioned, there's some good news. The market for used vehicles is slowly but surely becoming more affordable. A recent report found that there's a better chance of paying a little less for a used vehicle now and in coming months compared to a few months ago. This past January 2022, the average transaction price for a three-year-old vehicle was a bit more than $32,800. But six months later, in July 2022, the average transaction price was $31,300. That comes out to a decrease of 4.6%. In fact, average prices for used cars across the board actually fell for four months in a row. Analysts predict this trend will continue this month and into the next few months too. It'll be a steady decrease, but don't expect earth-shattering price drops. These price drops aren't just for gas-powered vehicles though. They're seeing it across the board, even with electric and hybrids too. The reason is because since August 2022, gas prices have been steadily declining, and experts expect this trend to continue steadily, with the possibility of growing again this winter. But here's the thing. When gas prices were at their record highs earlier this year, consumers flocked to used EVs and hybrids. That's why the prices of used EVs and hybrids skyrocketed. But now fuel costs are down, and so is the number of people buying used electric or hybrid vehicles. In recent months, used EV prices declined by a dramatic 4% to an average of 64300 Used hybrid prices also fell by 3% down to an average of 47800 Tesla's also dropped in price by 4% this past 
past August 2022. That comes out to a drop of more than $3,000 for an average price of $67,300. Back in June, Tesla's peaked to an all-time record of 50% above projected normal prices. But lately, Tesla's prices are starting to show signs of softening. The 2024 Ford Mustang. With Ford focusing more energy on the EV race, the 2024 Ford Mustang might actually be the last of its kind to be powered by a V8 engine. And that's why Ford is going wild with the new Mustang. For example, the new Mustang will ditch the mechanical handbrake and instead just see a drift-inspired, electronically controlled one for sliding. This is the seventh generation Mustang and it has more muscular proportions and comes with tri-bar LED headlights. Inside, you'll find a 13.2-inch touchscreen. Among the changes Ford made to this Mustang include new design of the suspension knuckles, updated rear suspension links, a new flat-bottom steering wheel, and new shock. Ford says it'll be Mustang's most powerful generation. The 5-liter V8 under the hood of this Mustang will now breathe through a pair of throttle bodies to supply more air with new camshafts making the most of its updated induction system. Ford also updated the engine to include better packaging, a higher compression ratio, and updated turbocharger if you want the 2.3 liter turbo 4. So far, there's no news on the exact pricing for the Mustang, but analysts expect the based EcoBoost model to start at $29,000. Expectations are that the all new Mustang will go on sale next summer. If you haven't seen my recent video about the end of muscle cars, check that out too. Next on the list is the 2023 and 2024 Mazda CX-90. Today, crossovers and SUVs are by far the most popular car types across the globe. That's why the Mazda CX-90 is set to be a major improvement to the currently available CX-9. We're talking about all new three-row mid-sized SUVs, and expectations are that it'll be available with the options for a new inline six-cylinder engine or a plug-in hybrid. The CX-90 will be the first Mazda in the U.S. ever to use Mazda's all new new rear-wheel drive platform. And like all Mazda SUVs, the CX-90 will come standard with all-wheel drive. If the CX-90 follows the pattern of the CX-60 plug-in hybrid, we can expect this car to come with the same inline four-cylinder engine and 17.8 kilowatt-hour battery pack. The 2023 model is set to start production by the end of this year. Next on the list is one of my favorite brands, Toyota. They have a full-size SUV that gets its name from one of the largest and long-lived tree species in the world. I'm talking about the 2023 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. And I wasn't exaggerating about this SUV getting its name from a tree. Some Sequoia trees can live for 3,000 years. Actually, Toyota picked the name Sequoia for this SUV to convey strength, longevity, and beauty. The second generation came all the way back in 2007. And Toyota debuted the third generation Toyota Sequoia just this past January 2022. The new Sequoia comes decked out with all the bells and whistles for off-roading like forged 18-inch wheels with 33-inch tires, a front skid plate, crawl control, and a locking rear differential. This SUV also comes with four-wheel drive as a standard feature. Since the four-wheel drive only 2023 Sequoia TRD Pro is top-of-the-line variant, it is a starting price of just under $77,000. That's a pretty steep price. So how does this SUV compared with others in its category? Well, the Ford Expedition beats the base trim of this Toyota Sequoia in horsepower, but not in torque. But both the Toyota Sequoia and Ford Expedition are ranked very similar when it comes to things like heated steering wheels, heated and ventilation seats, and multi-zone climate controls. But now let's see what Nissan is doing. I'm talking about the 2023 Nissan Z. It has a starting base price of $39,990. But this isn't a new car. It's actually a refresh. The outside of the 2023 Nissan Z has a brand new outer skin that sits on its carried over platform. And the inside is features like an eight speaker Bose sound system and refreshed premium suede seats. You can't talk about the Nissan Z and not compare it to the Toyota GR Supra. Both these cars bring back the 1990 sports car nostalgia. The 2023 Toyota Supra gets its power from a pair of BMW engines. The first one produces 255 horsepower, and the second optional engine produces 382 horsepower. On the other hand, the 2023 Nissan Z gets its power from a twin-turbo V6 engine. The sole engine produces 400 horsepower. Both cars are available with manual transmission, but now the Z's cabin is a little more exciting than the Supra's. And when it comes to full efficiency, the 2023 Toyota Supra wins. It does 31 miles per gallon on the highway against the Nissan. 24 miles per gallon. The Nissan Z is expected to become available next spring 2023. 
Also on the list is the Corolla. Specifically, I'm talking about the Toyota GR Corolla. According to Toyota, the 2023 GR Corolla shares the Corolla name and quality you expect. But that's where the similarity ends. This all new Toyota was engineered by the Toyota Gazoo team. And the car was tested on a track by Toyota's president, Akio Toyota himself. But that's not all. The GR Marizo edition was actually named after Akio Toyota's racing pseudonym, Moritsu Kinoshita. It's hand built at the TGR Motomachi factory in Japan. The GR Corolla will feature a 1.6 liter three cylinder direct injected turbo engine that produces 300 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. The GR Corolla will also be the first ever Corolla to feature a rally derived GR4 front to rear adjustable all wheel drive system. The interior of the car is also racing inspired. As you can expect to see a 12.3 inch multi-information display with four-wheel drive mode along with turbo pressure and a gear shift indicator. Actually Toyota themselves said they built this car to get your pulse racing and take your breath away. One car I'm personally excited about is the 2023 Lexus RX350. We're talking about a complete redesign both inside and out. First off, the wheelbase is 2.4 inches longer and the rear overhang is shorter. Last year's V6 engine has now been changed to a turbocharged 2.4 liter inline four engine, which will produce 275 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque. It should get you from zero to 60 in 7.2 seconds. What we do know is that the 2023 RX will be offered in three different powertrain options at its launch. An all new turbocharged hybrid, plus you have the more traditional hybrid, and of course, a turbo gas engine version. As far as the interior redesign, we're talking about a new standard 9.8 inch unit display or an optional 14 inch infotainment display. That all said, some reviewers are actually calling this Lexus a wallflower because the design changes are less exciting. Its acceleration system has also been criticized for being just adequate and nothing more. Another car to watch out for is the 2023 Polestar 3. This is from the Swedish company that was bought by Volvo seven years ago. They released the first teaser of the Polestar 3 electric crossover all the way back in June 2021. The Polestar 3 is actually Polestar's first ever vehicle to be made right here in the United States. It's set to be manufactured in Volvo's factory in Ridgeville, South Carolina. But the Polestar 3 won't just be manufactured in the U.S. It'll also be manufactured by Polestar's Chengdu plant in China at the beginning of next year. The Polestar 3 should come available in long range of performance variants. Both variants will be powered by two electric motors. If you want to know what this car is about, well, Polestar CEO Thomas Ingenloth says this car is not a car to drive to kindergarten. Interestingly enough, this electric crossover will only come with two rows of seating, not three. The reason why is because two row seating allows the crossover to have a more aerodynamic profile. Initially, the Polestar 3 won't come with advanced technologies like autonomous highway piloting. Technology like that that will become available later through a software update. Right now, much of the specifications of the Polestar 3 are just in speculation. What is known is that its driving range is expected to be 372 miles. Polestar is yet to release an official price. But analysts expect the base price to be anywhere between $70,000 to $80,000. Polestar is really hoping the Polestar 3 will boost their growth trajectory and take the company to its next growth phase. Polestar has seen its up and downs. In the first six months of this year, 2022, they had revenues of $1.04 billion. That's almost double the $53.4 million they made last year. But they also reported an operating cost of $520 million, which is an increase of 143%. Let's look at another crossover. That's the 2023 Honda CRV. This one will have a completely new look on the outside and inside. Inside, you'll find adaptive cruise, blind spot monitoring on all models, an infotainment system with available seven to nine inch touchscreens with wireless Android Auto and lane keeping assist. Under the hood, you'll find a retuned standard 190 horsepower turbo four engine. You'll also have the option of a 204 horsepower hybrid powertrain. And on the outside, we're talking about a refreshed sporty look. The front of the car will have an active shutter lower front honeycomb grill on it. This grill is engineered to close and open when the underhood system needs more cooling air. This will also enhance aerodynamics. The 2023 CRV will be decked out with specially engineered LED daytime running lights and LED high and low beam headlights for enhanced visibility. But here's where things get really interesting, the price. Honda officially released the price of the CRV a few weeks ago and there's been mixed reviews. A base CRV EX with front wheel drive and a 1.5 liter turbocharger 
charge engine will cost you $32,355. That's a lot more expensive than the 2022 base model's price of $28,035. The 2023 CRV's middle trim will be the sport all-wheel drive 2-liter powertrain hybrid, and that trim will set you back $35,195. The Inflation Reduction Act, or IRA for short, wants you to buy an electric car. That's why the IRA includes two revamped tax credits when you buy an electric car. One tax credit is up to $7,500 if you buy a new EV, and the second tax credit is up to $4,000 if you buy a used EV. That all sounds pro-consumer and pro-car at first glance, and you might think it's a promising big incentive for those who are shopping for a car, but actually it's very, very complicated. The thing is, this isn't the first time that the U.S. has offered tax credits for electric cars. What makes this bill unique is that it completely revamps those earlier credits, but along with these updates come a lot of caveats. As they say, it's always in the fine print. Well, there's a caveat on pretty much everything, from which EV models qualify to even car buyers' income level requirements. Put together, these requirements and conditions make it so that the electric car of your choice might not even be eligible for those incentives and benefits. Today, the average price of a new EV is 66,000 bucks. That's not cheap. In fact, stats show that most Americans can't afford a new EV at this moment. With new and used car prices being high, you can see how the tax credit from the new Inflation Reduction Act sounds attractive. But the fact is, there are very specific requirements if you want to qualify for the EV tax credit. For example, if you're single, you qualify for it if your income is less than $150,000 a year. And if you're a married couple who files taxes jointly, you qualify if your combined household income is less than $300,000. The government put a high cap on income to help less affluent consumers qualify for an electric car and to motivate car companies to expand their customer base. But what if you're outside this income group? In other words, if your income exceeds the cap? Well, if you're making more than the income cap, you should be able to afford an EV without a tax credit anyway. Let's say you already have your heart set on a particular EV, but now you have to see if the EV is eligible for this new tax credit. That's because the Inflation Reduction Act sets specific requirements on EV makers too. For starters, to qualify for the full tax credit, the EV has to be assembled here in North America. Right now, there are more than two dozen EVs that meet this requirement, but there are many dozens of others who don't. Starting January 2023, new requirements must be met by electric vehicles to be eligible for the tax credit. For example, there will be a price requirement. New electric trucks, fans, and sports utility vehicles must be less than $80,000 to qualify for the tax credit. New electric sedans must be under $55,000. Used EVs have a price cap of $25,000, but used EVs don't need to comply with the Made in America requirements. On top of that, also effective next year, the Act also requires that a certain percentage of minerals in the EV battery must come from North America or a country that has a free trade agreement with the U.S. There is no other option, and most of the battery components must be manufactured or assembled North America. This requirement itself now makes things complicated for car companies. Currently, almost 90% of our refining is done in China. In fact, next year when the battery requirements take effect, no electric vehicle on the market will qualify for the full tax credit. This is going to be a huge hurdle and burden for car companies to overcome. And once we hit 2028, qualifying EVs will be limited to those with batteries fully sourced from North American minerals and parts. Now, you could get a partial credit of 3750 if at least 40% of the critical minerals in the EV battery is sourced from countries that the U.S. has a free trade agreement with. The other half of the tax credit is related to battery components. Starting next year, at least half the battery components must be made or assembled in North America to qualify for that other half of the credit. So, let's say you buy an EV just before the IRA requirement on electric vehicles take effect fully next year. And let's say you haven't received the car yet. Well, the IRA was signed on August 16, 2022. The good news is that if you bought a qualifying vehicle, before that date, the full IRA standards don't retroactively apply. That's also the same for a car you agreed to purchase in writing before August 16th, but didn't receive until after that date. This also applies no matter where the final assembly took place. So if you bought a Kia EV on August 15th, just before midnight, you got in just at the nick of time. Bottom line is, under the new act, some car makers win and others lose. Based on EVs that are currently available on the market, for example, higher-end EV companies like Rivian will lose out. That's because their EVs are expensive and exceed the price cap. But then there are companies like GM or Tesla. They've been making electric cars here in the U.S. for years. These companies have already started shifting their supply chains to meet the IRA requirements. If you're a fan of Toyota or Hyundai or other international car, well, these car makers are facing some big decisions now. European and Asian car makers have some limited production here in North America. So now they're having to consider if it's worth shifting production and material sourcing to the states in order to qualify for the program or whether it's better to do without. 
The Inflation Reduction Act also jeopardizes the upcoming combustion engine ban that's coming in 2035. When the ICE ban was announced here in the U.S., car companies across the board were left scrambling to design more electric vehicles, and some had to begin designing their first electric vehicles at risk being left behind. But now, thanks to the IRA, car companies are left scrambling for a completely different reason. Before these changes were announced, if you were interested in buying an EV, you usually just put down a couple hundred bucks for a refundable deposit on an EV. But now, that's all changed. Now, your best shot is to sign a binding contract for the tax credit. At least, that's what car companies will tell you. That's because the IRA includes transition rule. The rule states that any customer with a written binding contract for purchase of an EV before the law goes into effect can still choose to take the old tax credit. And that still applies to vehicles that are delivered after the bill was enacted. Take Volkswagen, for example. They stated that they cannot guarantee that their ID.4 subcontract electric SUV will be eligible for the new IRA electric vehicle tax credits. Because of this uncertainty, Volkswagen sent an email to their customers. In the email, Volkswagen urged their customers to enter into a written binding contract to purchase. They added that this contract is their best chance of qualifying for the tax credits. But Volkswagen is only the latest out of a slew of car companies that are pushing binding contracts over reservations in the next few months that are left before the new tax credits go into effect. Audi, BMW, BMW and Rivian are some of the other companies pushing these purchasing agreements. And they all say the same thing. If you sign it, you can at least qualify for the old tax credit that doesn't require North American assembly or parts. Other companies are scrambling to find ways to assemble their vehicles here in North America. Well, even others are scrambling to find ways to source the materials for their vehicles domestically or from the U.S. official trading partners. Remember, 90% of EV batteries are sourced from China as it is right now. That means 90% of all EV models available in the U.S. now need to find a way to get their batteries from somewhere in North America. Right now, there are 72 EV models available for purchase in the U.S. That includes battery, plug-in hybrid, and fuel cell electric vehicles. Of the 72 models, a whopping 70% are ineligible for the tax credit at this moment. And when the material sourcing requirements go into effect next year, none of the models available today will qualify for the full credit, at least not in the near term, until they change their production to meet the requirement. If you step back for a moment and see this in context of the 2035 combustion engine ban, well, the Inflation Reduction Act's requirements prohibit car makers and American consumers from moving in that direction. So while on paper everything sounds good, in reality it limits us from supporting the ice band. For the 2035 ICE ban to succeed, Americans have to adopt EVs mainstream. The IRA tax credits on EVs is supposed to help accelerate that, except that the eligibility requirements kind of throw a wrench in that plan. For example, look at the EV prices right now. Currently in the EV industry, we've been seeing super high prices on used EVs and hybrids. Usually, used EVs and hybrids are the friendlier option for your wallet. That hasn't been the case lately. If you're wondering why, well, gas prices have gone down recently, but earlier this year, you'll recall the gas prices reached record highs. When gas prices soared over four bucks a gallon, more Americans than ever started looking for more used, energy efficient electric and hybrid cars. Growing demand helped to raise prices on used EVs. So how are we talking here? Well, over the past year, prices on used cars rose by about 11% on average. That's pocket change when you look at how high used EVs grew. Since last year, if you look at over 1.8 million used car sales, prices on used EVs skyrocketed 56.7%. And hybrid and plug-in hybrid cars, prices rose by 30%. 0.5%. Three of the 10 used cars that had the steepest price increases over the last 10 years were electric, and five of them were hybrids. In case you didn't catch that, that means eight out of 10 used cars. What were the remaining two? Well, those were a sports luxury SUV and a fuel efficient subcompact model. The battery powered Nissan Leaf went from being the poster child of rapid depreciation a year ago to the used car with the heftiest price increase today. We're talking a price increase of 48%, which equates to 8,500 bucks more for a used Nissan Leaf than before. In other words, the average Average transaction price for a used Nissan Leaf is $28,100. Second place is a used Hyundai Sonata Hybrid. Its average selling price is $26,100, which is a 43% increase compared to last year. And third place is the Toyota Prius, which has been selling for $29,700, which is 37% higher than before. Since new vehicle supplies are razor thin, some hybrid and EV shoppers don't have much of a choice other than shop from a dealer's pre-owned inventory. If you're wondering what cars have the smallest price hike, well, majority are pickup trucks. The Nissan Titan actually saw a 2% drop in value. And then there's a full-size Nissan Armada SUV, which has fallen an average of 7.4% since July 2021. If you're in New York City and you're shopping for a car, I got bad news for you. Residents of New York City actually paid the highest hikes in used car prices for the past 12 months. I'm talking 18%. If you're in the San Francisco metro area, it's at 16%, followed by Miami Fort Lauderdale at 15.7%. But if you live in Oklahoma City, you can consider yourself fortunate because used vehicles in 
in Oklahoma are actually 1.5% cheaper than they were one year ago. But now, you tell me, are you planning on buying an EV in the near future? And does your EV qualify for the tax credit under these rules? Are you thinking about buying a new EV or a used EV? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.